<laughs> no, it's live. <laughs> Charles, you almost got me in trouble there. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Scrollers Chat. Uh, it's been about two weeks since we saw you guys last. Uh, missed you guys. <sighs> Tonight, we're going to be talking about, uh, well, kind of creating a website for your scroll saw patterns to sell them, and then uh, how to, some ideas on how to stop. Uh, people from potentially stealing your patterns uh, without paying for them because let's face it uh, as designers both Charles and I and other designers have faced that problem every day uh, So we're going to talk about some ideas on how to stop people from doing that uh, Charles put out a video earlier this week on his YouTube channel uh, So you can check that one out if you want to see how he does it. He does it using GIMP and then uh, I have a way where I do it, and um, I use a different program, and I make it 3D so people can't actually cut the pattern, but it still looks cut. I actually so, like the way yours looks better than mine. But uh, so I'll oops. show you guys. Oops, sorry. So I'll That's show you guys. <laughs> I'll show you guys kind of how to do that, and then uh, we got a couple other housekeeping things. But before that, uh, Charles, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell them where to find you. I am Mortimer Snurd. Nice to meet you. Uh, I am Charles Deering, WoodenVisions.com, sponsored by Harnell Media. About, about to partner up, uh, rather than spot, be sponsored by, I'm about to partner up with another company to be announced. Anyway, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, that's me getting derailed. Jeff Robinson, Paul Nessie Workshop, uh, Be Happy. His name is John and Carl Taylor are out in the chat. And uh, uh, on Facebook, I'm uh, the Charles During. Instagram, I'm the Charles During. Uh, but my website is woodenvisions.com. Oh, I, I'm wearing the wrong hat, Lee. Why'd you let me do that? I don't know. Put your scroll on hat on. Yeah, I got to do that. <laughs> there we go. That just looks so much sexier, don't it? By God. Thank you, Paul, John, uh, Carl, and Jeff for. For joining us if i missed anybody i suck and i'm sorry scroll on <laughs> and uh, i can't see the chat right now so you guys can uh, say all you want about me over there i won't see it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but charles might tell me afterwards yeah y'all talk smack i'll say it by god <laughs> um all right guys well uh now that charles has introduced himself a couple of housekeeping things um for those of you that are interested in coming to the Ohio picnic, uh, please get your registrations in soon. I know it's still uh, a couple months away, but um, the earlier we get our registrations in, the better for the club so that we can start paying for things like the building and uh, dinner res for dinner, the having it catered, food, stuff like that. Um, so, that so that we can pay for everything we need to pay for for the event. Um, we got some in, but we need to get a lot more in. Uh, otherwise, we will not be having a picnic. Uh, so come May or uh, come March, if we don't got enough in, um, the picnic may or may not happen, depending on how many registrations we get in by then. Uh, that goes for uh, scrollers and it goes for vendors too. So we've got a couple of vendors in already, uh, but we're working on getting a couple more. Um, but the ones that we do have in, uh, PS Wood Machines is confirmed they will be here at the show. Uh, we do have a new lumber company called Dahl Lumber, which is here in Ohio, uh, Southington, Ohio. Uh, they will be joining us for the show. Uh, Bruce Worthington will be here with Worthington House in Tarsia. Sorry, Worthington House in Tarsia, LLC. Spread it out, man. That's a long <laughs> thing to say. Uh, <laughs> there you go, derailing me again, Charles. Thanks. It's all good. My existence derails people. Anyway, uh, Charles <laughs> just threw me off track. Uh, Bruce will be here <laughs> with his patterns, selling his stuff. Um, and we are currently in talks with uh, Seiko, possibly. They're, they don't know yet. And uh, RBI is thinking about it. So um, we will let you guys know when we know more about those guys. But right now it is Dahl Lumber, PS Wood Machines, Worthington House, Scrollers Choice will be here, of course. Uh, and uh, Saw will have a booth uh, here as well. So if you guys want to meet anyone from Saw, uh, mostly I think Misty is going to be here. Um, so if you guys want to meet Misty, talk to her about Saw or anything like that, um, she will be here. 
I wish well. I could afford to go to that Lee, man. I mean, you and I have known each other for years, never met. I finally got to meet Carl. Yeah, we have to uh, figure something out for you. Yeah, we need to do a GoFundMe. Get Charlie to Ohio. Please. Yeah, maybe maybe people will donate. You guys want to start a GoFundMe for Charles to get to Ohio? <laughs> yeah. Never know. Could when happen. When is that again? I mean. In May. Yeah. Well, this coming? Yeah. Lord, uh, time let flies. Me, let me think of what the dates are again. Uh, the <laughs> My brain farts for today. Sometime. Oh, hell, mine constantly farts. Uh, let me look at May here real quick. February, June. I'm going backwards. There's some kind of woodworking March. show coming to Houston in April, and that's about four or five hours away, but I'm considering it. Um, now, let's see here. John is asking if anybody's going to see the Atlanta show. And I don't have the money to go this year. Otherwise, I would love to. I, that was the one show I went out of my comfort zone of staying in Texas and close by. And two days in, I freaked out. Panic when I freak when I say freak out, I had a major panic attack. But it was sort of worth it because I got to meet Carl, Steve Good. I got to meet so many people I'd been talking to. Oh, I met Jeff Robinson before too. I, I haven't gotten to meet John or Jeff Robinson yet. I don't remember how to say John's last name it starts with an L, but maybe he's private about it. So maybe I shouldn't say anything. Oh, and Jeff Robinson no. said, uh, Misty is going to the Houston show where he was told that. Yeah. Misty it, will probably be in Houston. She's trying to be at all the shows that she can be at. So I think she's probably going to be at Houston too. Oh, well, that, that'd be a hoot. Me and her in the same dang room. All right. So I just pulled up the website. I'm going to show you guys real quick. Well, of course. Um, the dates and all that so okay. let's do that real quick since we're getting closer to the picnic hey lee why don't you give us the dates and stuff i'm gonna do that right now i have the greatest ideas don't i <laughs> i did lee. that's why i'm screen sharing i'm the comic Can you relief see um all i see is the chat let me get back over there yes sir i saw a dog now i see what you're talking about all right so guys this is our website may 18th so it's NEOS Club, one word, NEOS, short for Northeastern House Scrollers, NEOS Club, Wixsite.com slash home. Go there, scroll down. All the information's right here. The Northeastern House Scroll Song, Woodworking Expo, Friday, May 18th, and Saturday, May 19th. Uh, here's some suggested lodging for you. The vendor registration is the top one. The bottom one is the scroller registration. Uh, here you can see some of the vendors that will be joining us, as well as a link to their website so you guys can see i'll be adding more to that as we get more people uh and then if you go here to the scroller registration this has all the information for the classes uh the only change that we have is we no longer have uh jessica Boleyn doing a class she had to drop out unfortunately so um that's the only one that has actually changed and then uh down here is the dinner uh, dinner is twenty dollars a person for dinner, uh, and then down here is all of the information for the scroll saw contest. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys: if you are an active saw member and you come to the show, uh, there is a dollar dollar cheaper dollar cheaper entrance fee for saw members yeah. with your ID. So make sure you guys bring your saw IDs with you. Uh. And then I know where mine is. <laughs> Sorry, I did not just snort. <laughs> uh, and then John, um, John asked about the Texas show, but I can't remember the exact date. I just know it's in April. And watch me be wrong about that, but it's in Houston, Texas, which is quite a bit yeah. of a drive for me. But I, I'm gonna do everything uh, I can to go there. I think we had it in the local or the recent sawdust. Let me. Uh, did we? Yeah, I think I the date is somewhere. somewhere. I haven't even opened it yet. I've been so darn dang busy. Let me look while you do your show, sir. Hang on real quick. I think uh, I have it here. Uh, okay. Let me... The dates for that are right here. I got them, Charles. Just give me a sec. Okay, I'm just looking for my own curiosity because I'm watching the chat. I hope I can go financially. Uh, everything's about dang money. Well, usually it's about my anxiety too, but I'm trying to get better at fighting that. 
Uh, and then the very next month is in northeastern Ohio. God, that's going to be. Uh, I Comprehensive go. Woodworking Show, Texas. Is this at Crown Plaza, Texas? I I don't know. Let me see if I can look at the the advertise. Oh, I thought you were screen sharing. Because if I see the, if I see the, uh, was it posted by Norm Nichols? Mm, all I know is it's Woodworking Show of Texas. Uh, it may very well be that one. Uh, it looks like it's April 13th through the 15th. Okay, there's your date. Uh, uh, John, John LaCourse said he would uh, may consider because this is birthday month. Mine is in June. Uh, for, okay, he said John. John will go to uh, www.woodworkingshowoftexas.com. Oh, woodworkingshowoftexas.com. Good to know. Did you hear that, John? Huh, huh, John? Huh? Just kidding. Uh, I don't see it advertised in the uh, saw sawdust. It's on uh -huh. a. Uh, if you look in there, it's got a uh, page where it's got dates for upcoming shows. I don't see that anywhere because. Unless you don't know. Oh, oh, it's on the very last page. Yeah, on one of those pages in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, April thirteenth through the fifteenth. Only twelve bucks to get in, dude. You know I gotta go. You know how I knew that was in there. Kind of think that you're the editor of Sawdust. <laughs> kind of think I put it in there. Yep. <laughs> so y'all, th those of y'all that did not know, Saw Scroll Saw Association. Uh, goes, ah, poop. Scroll Saw Association of the World is what Saw stands for. Saw Dash Online dot com, and this is their thing. It's called Saw Dust. And Lee is our editor, her editor. And now on the board. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is totally off topic, but John's asking me something. John, is it some that kind of oil that goes under your tongue? <laughs> you don't, uh, I won't talk about it anymore on the show. I don't know your email address, but I think we're friends on uh, Facebook, uh, John. And, but if you don't mind writing to me on Facebook, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. I also want to see what you look like. Anyway, back on topic, sir. Back to you. Okay. All, All right. right. Uh, next idea that I have to run by you guys real quick is um, for the magazine. If you guys ordered for a uh, 2018 subscription, PDF or print, we send out the PDFs. Uh, they're going to start sending out today or tomorrow. Uh, probably tomorrow considering they we're supposed to go out today. Uh, I got a little bit behind today. Sorry about that. Uh, but the PDFs will start going out tomorrow. The prints went to printer last week. So we got one more week, and they'll be out from the printer, and then they'll be shipped to you guys. Yay. Uh, this is the current. If you guys don't know about oh, I'm still on Charles. They can't see me. If you guys don't know about uh, the magazine yet, this is some of our back issues. We got different themes for different parts of the year. Uh, there's our website right there, kind of, sort of. Uh, Sorry. There it is. Scrollers yeah, Choice. To give me a ride if I write MAG.wixsite.com slash home. Go there, and you can check out all our back issues and uh, sign up if you guys want. Uh, our prices, we're still working on trying to get them down. It's still $44 a year. Uh, our printing cost is insane. Um, that's because we don't have a lot of people signing up for the print issue. Uh, more sign up for the PDF now. So uh, we need to get that fixed. But uh, we're trying to fix that. But uh, without advertising or uh, more readers, it's hard to get the cost down. So, But we're working on it. Some other ideas we have is to try to get uh, outside the U.S. shipping so that we can um, start getting more print orders outside the United States to get our readership up to so we're working, that's one thing we're considering too so we're working on it trying to get the price down but uh as of right now it's still 44 for the year uh it comes out to 11 dollars an issue of that we're only making two or three dollars i just want to put that out there and if you are good at finding advertisers and working with advertisers please contact lee or john because uh you know that th this whole magazine is a learning process for them and they're we want to see it succeed because it's for scrollers by scrollers but my god help <laughs> please yeah we need uh, a lot of stuff we need um proofreaders we need advertisers people that know how to get advertisers or ads uh that have a background in that or uh, just want to help out um we, we can really appreciate it because uh we do we need to uh, we do need help on that <laughs> rubbing off on you 
yeah between um myself and john we do so much stuff um that it's hard sometimes for us to sit down and call the advertisers all the time too so on top of everything else we do currently all right well um getting on to tonight's actual topic <laughs> so now that the now that the house cleaning is done I uh, that john is my long lost brother because we're, we got so much in common here out in the chat both military brats both born overseas and both twins there you go maybe he is your long lost brother well, he's saying he's a pretty one, but I've never seen a picture of what he looks like. So, John, send me a picture of what you look like on uh, on Facebook, and then I'll see if you're pretty or not. If so, we'll talk. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. But we will talk. Uh, okay, my reputation just got sunk. <laughs> uh, back to you, Lee, sir. Dude. Go okay, ahead. Charles. You All right. Oh, wait, we so got to tell folks how much fun we have, Lee. Right before the show started, we say, get all your cussing out. You should have heard us. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, because you're not supposed to cuss on the YouTubes, you know what I mean? So we, we were just talking a little smut right before the camera came on, and I dang near skirted it too close. That's why we were laughing when the show started. <laughs> Back to you, Lee. All right. Thanks, Charles. All right. So here <laughs> is with the way that i do uh my designs for my website um first thing i want to tell you guys um you can go and you can get a website and you can pay for a website and probably charles can tell you that uh arnell media is a good place to go if you guys are looking for a website for uh makers especially yeah, he but, specializes um, in makers, but that's not all he does. But he does specialize in makers. There's a bunch of them folks doing it. But uh, for, <laughs> for people like me that don't sell a whole heck of a lot of patterns all the time, and they want to do things on the cheap end, uh, you can go to one of these free websites like Wix or one of those, which is what I use. Um, I'll show you guys really quick my website. Okay. Hold on, I think I just turned off. Hold on, I'm having issues. All right. Okay, let's try this again. Because it on did this. Okay. Okay. Never mind, never mind. Okay, can you see my screen now, Charles? uh let me get over there sir well yes i can okay so this is my website uh if you guys want to come here and visit it is wooden wonders or not wonders it's wooden wonder it's supposed to be wonders but it's wooden wonder workshop .com slash home uh come on over and check it out right here you can see uh, this is a free website that i set up through wix uh, i've been working on this off and on for about a year, uh, not completely all the time. So there's uh, times when I got the magazine going or stuff going for Saw that I don't get a chance to work on it. But uh, this is the home page. It's got all this stuff here. And then if you go to the About section, this just has a little brief history of when I got started scrolling and you know some of my inspirations and whatnot. Uh, so. If you guys want to read my print, my bio, it's there. But uh, what I was going to show you guys tonight is the scroll saw patterns. If you click here, it'll take you here. Uh, if you want to go here, you check out any of these. Um, we'll start on the military. Let's just start on the cars, I guess. That would be a good place to start. Yeah, let's start there, Lee. <laughs> Sorry. Trying As you guys can see. I love the way you display those, dang nevit. Um, you, I don't use the actual pattern on here. I use the actual cutout looking. That way people, even if they open this image, which it's already small, well, this one's bigger, but you can see that it'd be kind of hard to print this thing out and try to cut it. And the program you do that with is only available on Windows 10, correct? Yes. Dell, that breaks my heart because I'm Windows 7. But I love the, I love the look of that. And so basically, I just use this program, and uh, 
it's what I use on here and I'll show you guys in a minute the program, but um, I'll just show, give you a brief tour here real quick. I use it over here on my crosses, uh, which come out pretty cool looking because they look 3D. So yeah. like here. So you can see there. That's plum nifty. I don't know why you don't sell more. We were talking earlier about how both of us kind of low on sales, but I don't think a lot of people know about my website. That that, that <laughs> that's probably the biggest part. They probably more people know about you than your website. Yeah, but uh, yeah, all my patterns are here, and that's how I do them. I use a program, and I make them look like wooden. When people try to go and use them, it's not the pattern. It's actually the, uh, the it looks like the cut version of it if you come down here to the uh interstitial vehicle patterns these are still patterns uh because uh, you don't have a way of showing them 3d i don't have a way of showing them 3d without them looking like see the truck down here i don't have a finished picture of these yet because no one's cut one yet so if um, anybody out there buys one and cuts it uh send yeah. it to Lee so he can use it as a display image yeah, I will post it up on my website for you. Uh, but so you can see I fuzz these out pretty good. Fuzz them up, baby. And as you expand this, it's kind of harder and harder to use it. So my my old my old way of doing it, almost nobody could tell. Even my current website, the I, never mind. It's, it's still your topic and your site, so I'll wait. <laughs> and then down here on the fire plumper, uh, this is actually a finished piece, of course. And this was cut by uh, Don Lorenz. And he won a prize. Yes, he did. He won first place in Iowa last this past year uh, for the Intertia, uh Is it not complex? I think it's the next one after complex. I can't remember what it was. Intermediate or something. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Don. I can't remember exactly which one it was. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you guys want to check out that, you have to check out uh, Scroller's Choice Firefighter Edition. Because uh, it's in there, so that's where this pattern is. It's in that magazine for support, or uh, the firefighter first responders issue. It's in there, and the story about his ribbon is in there too. Uh, right. So that's that one. Everybody then, stopped chatting. So I don't know if I bored them or ran them off or what, but maybe they're just interested in what you're doing, and we're not chatting. And then uh, these are my wildlife ones. So far, <laughs> I only got two, but you can see. Um, what I did with the hawk here, I made him look 3D and actually look like it's cut out. So if you try to use this, it would be really hard to. Yeah. And I actually I angled it too in that program so that it's harder to like cut it because it's not you know flat. Yeah, if you try now to steal that, you're just you're just uh, you're trying really hard. This one, <laughs> you know, you can try to steal, but it's already blurry enough. But. Some of these, this one didn't work for some reason in that 3D program. That's why it's like that. But, uh, Jeff uh, Robinson saying, Lee, you need to advertise in Sawdust Magazine. I can talk to the editor for you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> funny right there. Yeah, why don't you advertise it? Yeah, you do. He does advertise in the... In the yeah, but the, I don't know. I don't advertise for my patterns. I advertise for uh, the magazine. In there. Oh, I thought I thought you had a... Oh yeah, the magazine is what, okay. Yeah, never mind. Back to you, sir. Yeah, I don't advertise my site in there. I just advertise my uh, magazine, uh, which is I could maybe talk to them about that. I don't know. Uh, okay, so this is what I do for my website. So you guys have seen how I use it now. Now I'll show you the program real quick. And, um, I think I just stopped screen sharing. That's why uh, nobody was chatting. Is John? John is like me. Whenever you chat too much in the chat, it'll make you stop and wait a little bit. <laughs> it's their way okay. of saying we're babbling. Go ahead, sir. So, for example, to show you guys, here's some of the, you can see the cross here, the paramedic cross. Um, yeah. For example, that's one that I had used on there. Uh, but I'll show you guys. I'm going to find one that I can start from start to finish. <coughs> I'll show you guys. Do you have any clue how many designs you've done through the life of your designing? Uh, I don't know. I never stopped to count it. Probably not as many as you. Uh, well, my earlier ones, I would, I, I, I crack up when I, when I did it because I used to use like Microsoft Paint type crap. But 
<laughs> oh yeah, some, some funky programs back in the day and originally. Yeah. But. 1997 is when I started designing. And they all, what, okay, let me ask you what everybody asked me. What got you started designing scroll saw patterns? Uh, what got me started designing scroll saw patterns is I kept making the same pattern over and over on the saw, like just cutting it. And then uh, after that, I was kind of like, you know, like looking for something else to cut. So I found the internet, you know, because the internet was big back then. You know, the MSN groups had just started and all that. Yeah. Uh, so I found the MSN groups. And I can't even remember exactly which one. It may have been absolutely free scroll saw patterns or something like that back then. But uh, I went on there and something on there, somewhere in there was on how to on that forum was how to make your own scroll saw patterns. Uh, and I basically walked myself through that. And I posted up a bunch of patterns that had floaters and all that. And people probably got, got sick of me and said, dude, you, I think one person said, dude, you post one more and you're going to kick you out or something. Yeah. Like how annoying that was being. But uh, yeah. <laughs> there were people on there telling me, hey, this is a floater. That's a floater, blah, blah, blah. And I had to do that until I finally figured out that's, you know. The that's thing everybody got on me for was uh, – basically spamming i would spam the crap out of people and whether they liked it or not i mean well that sounds arrogant but i wasn't that mean about it i just posted it anywhere and everywhere but i started designing because i like realism and i wasn't seeing that in the scroll saw patterns of the time that was that was my inspiration for starting and i don't know programs very well is what made me decide to do it on paper all right so you guys can see uh real quick and you know, one of the, just one more thing about that, real quick, before we move on. Um, like, um, I'm trying to think, I just thought of his name and I can't remember now. Oh, like Patrick Spielman, I had a bunch of his books and stuff like that, and he was kind of like the inspiration for me. And then, um, you know, I started getting more and more stuff, and then I started doing uh, cars because that's really what interested me. And, you know, like Andy Dean was a big, Oh yeah. Andy Dean was big. Yeah, he was, he was like my, my yeah. idol. And I, uh, learned a lot from like his patterns. And then, uh, you know, I kind of saw how he did things and then I learned from him a lot, you know, I wonder what made him stop designing. Cause he's I know still, he's still out there. Yeah. He's still, and I got him on my Facebook and he still does stuff, but he's got a lot of stuff going on right now. So he doesn't, you know, cut too much or design too much, but he's still out there. Yeah. So. One guy I admired was Jeff Zapino and then everybody, you know, found out he, he got busted using copyrighted art, but the, now I'm only going by what I was told because I happened to be talking to an artist of which he borrowed his designs and, uh, what bothered the artist the most wasn't so much that he used his design, but that he, and I'm not here to slam Jeff. I'm just relaying the story uh, is that he made it out as if he created the design from his head, from life experiences. And that bothered the artist. And that's why it was a, what do they call it? When a whole bunch of people sue class action lawsuit. So that's yeah, a bunch of people. Jeff. and yeah. Mike Williams is another one that's been around a while and he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, Mike is an awesome designer, too. And Carl Taylor's bringing up, which is a good point, Dirk, Dirk Bowman drew most of the Spielman's patterns. Yeah, Dirk and uh, yeah, he, he did the, they worked together a lot. So I never got to meet Dirk before he passed. He I did. Back. I met him one time. He came here to Ohio, and that was the one time that I met him and Karen. So yeah, I, I remember, became friends. So. I remember seeing a video of Carl interviewing Dirk, so I know he got to meet him. Yeah, I met him once, and then uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to ever go to hang out with him up in Iowa. Yeah. Now, now I do though. Now I go up and I uh, go up to the show for uh, the magazine, and then I go up there and I hang out with Karen. So, you know, I never didn't get to do it, but now I do it. When, you know, for Karen and all that. So. Cool. And I I hope this my hater is getting a little nippy out here. All right, so I uh, opened this bear that I designed, and then I um made them a little bit bigger so that we can work on them a little bit better. But the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to come over here to my tools and I'm going to my fuzzy select and I'm just going to click once and I'm going to see what it selects. Uh, and I want it to select everything black. So I'm going to just go like this really quick. I'm going to go select. Invert. Real quickly, can you remind us what program? Oh, you're using GIMP. Okay. This is GIMP, yeah. And then I'm going to hit cut. And then it'll tell me everything that it's just selected. So see, it actually selected everything I wanted it to. 
All right. So I'm going to just put that back, and I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to hit None. Okay. So then that part's done. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to find a piece of wood that we want the background to look like. So I'm going to take this piece of wood right here, and I'm going to drag this in down for the top of the bear. There we go. And then I'm going to slide the bear up to the top layer. I'm going to go to that select tool again. I'm going to select my image stuff again, and then I'm going to go to... And since Lee is going so fast, folks, you're welcome to pause the video at each step. To <laughs> get to. I'm going to go to the eyeball right here, which makes the layer invisible. So I'm going to unclick that, and now you'll see that the marching fuzzy ants still look like the bear, but you can't see them. All right, so the, now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the paintbrush tool down here. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go to that, the round one, and I'm just going to make this big. It doesn't matter how big you make it, just big enough so you can uh, see what you're doing. Now, if you don't see it right away, that means that you have to go to the select up here and hit invert. Nope, I, I don't mean to tell a fellow's business, but you might want to go a tiny bit slower. because <laughs> It's hard to keep up with everything you're saying. Uh, there we go. Okay. So you wanted to make sure. Okay. So first thing you want to do, let me repeat this. Okay. How far back did you catch Charles? Uh, actually, I've been busy in the chat, but I can just hear you talking quickly. So I know it's going quickly. Does anybody in the chat have any questions? Like, am I going too fast for them? Are they asking anything specifically? Does, does anybody uh, want him to start over and go slower? Or am I the only one giving him crap about it? <laughs> uh, John just missed which program it was, and I just told him in the chat. It's GIMP. GIMP.org. Okay. It's, it's a free program, as is Inkscape, but he's doing this in uh, GIMP. Okay, let me do this, Charles. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to turn this wood off for a second, okay? And I'm just going to go back to step one. That way, if anybody missed it, we'll start from that. All right, so I, the first thing I did was I opened the bear, right? I made him a little bigger so it would be easier to work on him. Then I went to my fuzzy select tool, which is right up here. Hit this one right here, fuzzy select. Hey, and Paul, select the workshop is saying yes, and I'm not sure what he's answering. All right, I select the bear. And you guys can see that the marching ants are all around it. Now I want to make sure that it's. I want to make sure that it's selected everything right. So I'm going to go to select up here, and then invert, and then I'm going to go to cut. And I now I can see it took all the black, which is what I wanted it to do. All right, so I'm going to hit Control Z to go backwards. I'm going to hit none, and then what I'm going to do is come down here, find my piece of wood, drag it into GIMP, and I'm going to drag it over top of the bear. There it is. Then I'm gonna drag the bear on top, and then Dragging I'm gonna have to go bear, back to the fuzzy select tool, and I'm going to <laughs> reselect the bear. And once again, I'm gonna go over to select and root, and then I'm gonna go to turn this off. Okay, so this layer right here is the bear. We're not gonna cut them actually. We're just gonna turn it off. So the eyeball right here makes it invisible. All right, so now you can see the marching ants, but you don't see the bear. So now what you want to do is go down here and make sure you select this wood layer, the, the layer down here. Okay, all due respect, Paul is saying you're going fast. Okay. And then down on this part, you then take your paintbrush tool right here, and you're going to use black. Okay. And then you're going to paint in all of the pattern. Okay. So I'm just going to paint this in. Excuse me. I tell you, you can see I'm weird. Yeah. And then you're going to get to deselect. And there's the bear, okay? Next, you want to get to select. This, mark. this is the rectangular select tool. So you want to go up here. I'm just going to trim it. That's what we're all we're doing right now is we're trimming the pattern a little bit. And then we're going uh, to get it. Carl Taylor would like you to uh, uh, slow down and describe the tools you are using. And I know okay. your heart's in the right place trying to teach us this, but you are speaking kind of quickly. So, Okay. Uh, what did Carl miss? I 
I don't want to say everything, but uh, in other words, and I say this respectfully, is you're, you're saying, okay, now click here and then do this and this and this, and then click here and do this and that. And that, and I'm not trying to make fun of you, but that's that's the pace you're talking at, and I don't think anybody's grasping the tools you're using. Okay, uh, let's do this one more time then, all right, guys? Let's uh, first thing we want to do is open the bear, make sure he's big enough so you can resize him, all right? And then you want to go to fuzzy select tool, which is right here underneath. That's what you were just calling it, and that's actually what it's called, fuzzy select. Yeah, it's right under the rec the round. Eclipse select and above the scissors. All right. Okay. So, so it's called fuzzy select tool. Yeah. Fuzzy select tool. And then you take that you click it and then you come over here and you click on the outside area of the pattern and it should select. Whoop, the reason it did that is because I'm not. Hang on. I think it's because it's there. And when you see that eyeball in the right column, folks, that's the, that's the yeah. program's way of telling you that's what layer you're looking at. Right. So right now, the layer we're on is this one, which is called Look What I Caught. That's the name of that pattern. Called him uh -huh. a fishy. And then, um, so now I've selected it with the fuzzy select tool from the outside. Now it has selected the bear. Now I want to make sure that it selects everything inside the black area. So in order to make sure that I'm correct on that, I want to go to over here to the top where it's file, where it's right here, edits right here, selects right here, right? So mm -hmm. you want to go to select, then you want to go down to invert. So that's will select the inside only. Then you want to go to cut, go from edit. So it's from select to edit, and then you want to go down here to cut. Now this shows you everything that it took out. See the marching mm -hmm. ants are still there, okay? So you know that it cut everything. So then you want to go to Control Z on your keyboard. That's an undo. So hit, anytime you want to hit Control Z to undo stuff in uh, GIMP, it's the Control Z on your keyboard to undo it. Yeah, All right. So, edit, edit, undo. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that it's still selected, right? So you want to go up to Select, then None. Okay. So now it's not selected at all. Next thing you want to do is you want to go to your file folder wherever you got this wood at. And then you want to bring it over and drop it in GIMP. Okay, if you don't have the ability to drag and drop, how do you bring it in? Just file open? Yeah, you can go file open and look for it that way. Can you, could, you could come up here and go file open and then look for it. That's the way I generally do crap because... I just leave the folder right here so I know where it's <laughs> at. Uh, okay, so now that you got your wood in here, you want to take your bare layer, which is right here underneath the wood right now. You want to drag that up and put it on the top. So you see the bear instead of the wood. All right. Okay, All right. So you're so now, literally just dragging it from one position right. to the other. All righty. Now you want to go back to your fuzzy select tool, which is right here underneath the eclipse tool and above the scissors. Go back yes. to fuzzy select and you want to click on the outside again, just like we did last time. Now you can see that it selects the bear once more on the outside of the black. And you want to go here to select again, invert it again. It's like just what we did earlier. And then you want to go to, uh, you're not going to go to cut this time. You're just going to leave it selected like that. And now that it's selected, you're going to come over here into this layer, which is the look what I caught layer. Turn this eyeball off. And now you'll see the bear is gone, but the, the ants are still there. Okay. And uh, folks, that even after this is no longer live, you can always come back to this video to refresh how to how to do this. If If, if if any of it confuses you, that that's why I actually started doing mine on paper because programs confuse the crap out of me. But go ahead. Okay, so now that you turn this layer off, right? So there it is again. So just turn it off with the eyeball. All right. Now down here, once the layer is turned off, you can see that the ants are still around the bear. Now just make sure you're on the actual wood layer, and then you want to go to your paintbrush tool, which is down here, right next to the eraser. Then you want to come over here to your tool options. And you can make this bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do with it. But all you got to do is come in here and paint this with your paintbrush. Right, right, right. Okay, so and this only is gonna, how big of an area is yeah. painting. It's only going to paint what you have selected. Yep. So so it's going to be that bear, the inside of the bear, like we had selected. So it's just going to be that area of the pattern. Very nice, very nice. So there's the bear. 
once again, that's the bear there. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to deselect. So I'm gonna go over here to the top, file, edit, and then select, okay? Uh -huh. So one, two, three, select <laughs> is the third one. Go down to none, and now nothing's selected. All right, next step, you wanna come over here to the rectangular select tool. And you just wanna crop this a little bit. Don't take out the pattern. So you just want to come up here to, you know, wherever you think you want enough room. You want to leave a little bit of room on the bottom and the side, and I'll show you why in a minute. Once we get yeah. into the, once we get into the 3D program. All right. So then you want to go to over here to layer. So you go mm -hmm. file, edit, select, view, image, and then layer. Go to actually, I'm sorry, not layer. Go to image, and you go to flatten image. Image, and flatten, flatten image. And Is that basically to, like welding? Putting it all those one image? Yeah, it makes it all one image. And then you okay. go to over here to edit and then cut. Since the, you already selected that area, you cut them out. And then it'll take the area that you selected. All right. Now that that's gone, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to edit, file edit. And then you want to go to paste as new image. Yeah. And there's the new image. With you the crop know. there. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to go to file over here. And in this program, you can't use save as to save as a JPEG. You have to hit export as. It's kind of a, it's kind of one thing in GIMP that's just annoying. Don't use save as unless you want to save it in some layers. Because it'll yeah, save so you it. Go as down to where it says all export images. You can, you can choose the tag right there. Uh, you have to go to PNG. file export as. Yeah, and then you and then get you, that drop down. And then you go, I'm just going to call it bear.jpg. Oh, you like just you can just type in the tag and oh, you yeah. don't have to select one? Yeah, you can type in .png, .tiff, .tiff, whatever okay. you want. But if you know what they are, obviously a JPEG is .jpg. So I always just yeah. name it whatever .jpg, or unless I'm working with .png or .tiff, and then it would be .tiff or .png. .bit or .bit. There's another one too. I think it's uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of <laughs> dot gif. Yeah, for gif is a dot gif. No, so so on and so forth. This program will also save in layers. So if you want to pay, save as a PDF, it'll let you do that too in this program. So there's different multiple uh, layers you guys can save on into different formats. Uh, okay, so this is now saved on the desktop down here. So here he is on my desktop. And then what I want to do is I want to go to this program. Now, remember, this program is only available in Windows 10. Yeah, it is only available on Windows 10, but it comes with Windows 10. So it's nothing you have to go purchase. But right. I don't have Windows 10, so I suck out on that. And this program is called 3D Builder. And uh, can you tell people how version. to get to 3D Builder? They just click on that Windows symbol, and it's an option. Yeah, you if once you're on your desktop... You can go right here to the search bar, type in, if you have it loaded already on your program, on your computer, you hit 3D Builder, just hit 3D. Okay, and it'll 3D search Space it. Builder, okay. Anybody else? I don't even have to type in Builder, I just type uh, 3D, and then Invo. what's came up. Uh, now, once you're in here, um, I'll do this one more time, just so you guys, Charles was talking, so. Uh, <laughs> 3D. And then once this opens, you come to here, to the new scene that opens up a new Im image here. And then what you can do in this program, which is really cool, is the reason I save these on the desktop is so that I can just go like this and drag it right in. Drag and drop. Now, me and Lee talked about this when he first told me about the way he made those things look 3D. We looked all over to see if there was a Windows 7 version of this, and there is not. And that bothers the crap out of me. Now, the only problem I have with this program, and I haven't, maybe one of you guys out there have figured it out already, uh, but the only thing that I have against this is it won't let you save, change this background from gray to black. Yeah. I've been trying to do that, and it won't let me do it. Um, but you guys can see that. I think that's such a neat dang tool, man. I wish it came on Windows 7. But I fear change. That's why I don't want to get Windows 10. <laughs> you guys can see that this is kind of the idea for the bear uh, object. See how it's really thick? Yeah. Uh, we can change that real quick. What we're going to do is we'll come over here 
to, we'll click on it first to make sure that, okay, so right now it's not selected, see? But if we click on it, it'll go blue, so we know it's selected. All right, so you come up here, not object, go to edit, uh, go to split, and what you want to do is you can drag this layer up and down. So if I want to make it thinner. I yeah, just you're grabbing the green layer. Yeah, you can just grab that with your mouse, and then it lets you keep the top, keep the bottom, or keep both. Uh, for the sake, you just want to keep the top. And then come over here and you hit split, and it'll actually make it thinner. See? See, that's so dang cool. That pisses me off, dang it. And then what we want to do, <laughs> I have not tried this paint yet. Choose, and, oh, you know what I'm thinking? Let me try it. <laughs> That's interesting. I might be able to do that with this area, one would think. Maybe that's the way I could do it, Charles. What? Is if I can make this area black, is it maybe I could paint that area. I'll have to play with it in another time when I'm not on the show and experiment it's and report possible. back. Well, it uh, seems like the program by default makes the black transparent. If you can yeah. find a way to avoid that happening, then maybe. But anyway, we'll go to 3D print now. Oh, uh, Carl, Carl is saying this can all be done in Corel. I, Corel Draw, I did not know that. If you want to pay, if you want to pay for Corel. <laughs> I have Corel. I just don't, I don't, I don't know how to do what you're doing in Corel. So, Carl, make that your next video. <laughs> Please. Right. And uh, Carl so, likes your bear. Dub bear. Dub bears. <laughs> <laughs> Dub bears. Dub bears. <laughs> but Carl says he likes your bear. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Right. Now, what I want to do is this right here. <laughs> Carl telling you not to be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. I love you too. Um, <laughs> this is where I go, and right here, um, you want to open this. Okay, so now let me uh, go backwards because I don't think these guys were understanding what I did here. All right, so now that we made this thinner, right up here at the top, there's a 3D print thing right here. You click this. And it'll open this window. And basically, this is set up. The, if you guys actually wanted to 3D print this, you could. You could send it through a new print machine and print it. That's what this program is. But I don't use it for that purposes. But I mean, people that had a, you know, a 3D printer or something like that, you could actually cut this out. Um, but so you can angle it however you want. So you can go like that. But for the sake, for the, there. So right there, you can see. Hey, yeah. Carl is saying, let the magazine buy you, Corel. It's, it'll be a tax break. But the magazine is his magazine, Carl. So I think he might be trying to be facetious or something. All right. And then I'll just, <laughs> I'm just going to go. Like, can, all right. So now that I'm here, all we're going to do here in the screen is we're going to go to control on your keyboard. You can hit print screen. And all it's going to do is copy your screen for you. And then we're going to close this down. We're going to go back over to GIMP. And we can close this down. And then I just closed the program. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. And again, again, folks, gimp.org. O-R-G. It is a free program. Yes. All right. So now what you want to do on this program is open up GIMP. You come over here to edit, paste as, new image. And this is going to paste that image in here for you. And then you're just going to take your rectangular select tool, which is on the top here. We talked about that one earlier. Basically, what you did was a screen capture to put it on there. Yeah, and you just screen capture it. And then you go cut. You go paste as, new image. There Boom. you go. There it is. Hang on. Where to go? There. And then uh, you can, you know, Come in here. I sometimes I'll come in and clean up this gray area, but just to show you guys, that's how I did. And then uh, you know, let me zoom out for a sec. All right, and you can come in here. You can crop it however you want. Um, one thing though that I suggest when you put these patterns on your website. Uh, 
is that you put them up there so that it doesn't show the whole pattern. Even if it's in the wood, like with this 3D, you can still see the whole pattern. So sometimes what I'll do is I'm, when I put it up on the site, I'll deliberately do something like, you know. Cut off uh, part of it? Cut off part of it so it's not the full pattern. And that well, way, so to let folks know, the majority of people out there don't steal, but there are the ones that do. And if, if you know, if you're kind of somewhat depending on the income of selling patterns, that's why we have to go, go to measures like this. And by the way, Carl Taylor said, uh, cool process, Lee. Thanks for sharing. I just wish I wish that 3D builder was on Windows 7 to blab it. But Carl, uh, if you know how to do this and Corral, please put a video out. Seriously. That would be awesome. And so like one thing you can do here um, is you can select this background and you can go in here and you can actually clean this up more if you wanted to because there's dots you can see. Yeah, it looks like it's sitting on gray pegboard. So I just can, you can just come in here and clean it up if you want. Yeah, with a paintbrush tool. Just come in here and find the right size and come in here and clean it up. All righty, Leo. They can come in here and do the same thing, you know, readjust this, and zoom in, and then come in here and clean this up if you want. So, something like this. Now, there's a different way. Um, we can try this bear a different way if you want, and we can see if it makes uh, a little bit different. I can show you. Um, let me save this real quick. So again, remember in GIMP, you don't go to save as, you go to export as. Bear 3D. What happens if you hit save as? Uh, it doesn't let you save as a JPEG. Well, that's weird. It only lets you save as like a .xcf or something with five, with uh, layers. So you literally have to get to export. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna experiment once. I'm gonna see. I'm curious to see if. Uh, we do the bear a different way if it comes out looking a little different. So if Lee screws up, you got to uh, you got to witness it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this experiment. Oh, right, uh, so we're gonna go Carl, find uh, the bear. For what it's worth, Carl is responding to me saying for some reason his computer isn't recognizing the microphone, so he's got to get it fixed before he can do a vid. Dang nabbit. Okay, so the bear is back in GIMP again. Now watch this. All right, so the last time we did it, where we you know, uh, hold on a sec. Why is it doing this to me? I have no it's idea. Already, it's already starting. All right. Don't forget to cast loss or. Hang on. Let me just check. Once you get it figured okay. out. <laughs> All right. So now we've got it selected. Now, so what I'm thinking is last time we did it, we did it so it caught all of this out. Now I want to see if we can do it the other way around. Oh, uh, the opposite way. Oh, you mean making the bear be raised instead of the background. Right. Right, right, right. So he's just doing the reverse of everything he did on the other version. So something like... We're just going to do this real quick. So I want to... Okay. So come on, gonna, Lee, come on. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we'll go to Okay, I think I know what I gotta do. Alright, so we'll make So I think what we need to do is select all of this. Maybe like where this. you inverted before, don't invert this time. I'm totally guessing. I have no idea. Select it. Okay. Now I want to go to this. this. So what is that tool you just clicked on? The fill? Yeah, it's a paint bucket right next to the letter A. Yeah, it's the paint bucket, and I'm using the wood. One of the woods. Clicking on everything black. Yeah. 
and is there a way to zoom in to do that or are you stuck i can zoom in i just okay. not right the moment <laughs> This is where I'd be to the point where well, you get the idea. <laughs> we're so close. Just experiment. So, all right, let's see. Now, oh, uh, that... another option would be uh, Carl says uh, uh, make the bear dark brown and the background maple colored. Shadow the bear, says John. That suggestions, I expect. I think it's the vice versa. I think he's saying make the the bear dark and the and the background light. But, you know, he might be guessing right along with us. I have no idea. Okay, let me do something real quick. Oh God! Okay. So that would be the same as last time. Yeah. I'm curious. You've already exceeded my brain cells, so I'm just watching. <laughs> you see. Oh, uh, look, Carl is saying like a brown bear. <laughs> okay, so you're going to choose a darker wood tone for the for the actual bear. I think. <clears throat> so you basically just filled in the background color, and you're going to bring it back in to fill in uh, black parts. Yeah, I'm going to try something really quick. I think this program might let me do something. Let me try it. Okay. It's possible, bro. There's a way to do it the other way around. It'll just cut. What it'll do is instead of cutting it out like a flat image, it would cut it out like on the outside of the bear so it looks like the bear's cut out. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we're happening for. Yeah. Hmm. I think I might be able to invert it while well, in this program. I'm going to experiment with that. Okay. Uh, I think if I go to inverse, there it is. I just sold a scroll saw pattern while we was talking. Yay. I just did it. There it is. Okay, we'll get over <laughs> this. You did it. It looks a little funny, but you did it. You That's because it doesn't have to. Do. See, when you do this inverse, for some reason, it doesn't show the wood. Uh, yeah, but that way it looks like a bunch of floaters, and that would mess with people. Although there are people out there that scroll like that, they'll glue a bunch of little bitty pieces to the thing and Carl Taylor says a plique or overlay pattern well there that you just solved your black background thing right there that's one way of showing it in 3d uh, I just figured out how to do a black background <laughs> cool See, we, we got to witness it. Now you can advertise them like that. Sweet. Boom, Bippy. Import image. Object. I'm really upset that Windows 7 does not have this 3D builder. Dag blab it. I know. But you're going to have to do an angry letter in all caps. Keep an eye on And once somebody's unloading a laptop cheap that has Windows, <laughs> buy one. Just oh, for that. Uh, uh, it was not a pleak. It was applique, whatever the heck that means. I've never heard the term, but that Carl was correcting how I, how I uh, pronounced it. <laughs> Thank you for sounding it out for me, Carl. <laughs> that is so cool, man. See, now you finally figured out the black background thing, dude. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, that's all you do. The black breaker <laughs> wasn't even trying to do it, and I did it. Uh, happy accident. That did you know uh, matches 
were made by accident. I can't remember what the guy was trying to make, but he tried to scrape the goop off the end of the stick and it lit. So that's how matches were invented. What is that estimated cost at the lower left? That whole bar, what is it? Oh, if you want to actually cut. Oh, if you wanted it, okay, yeah. Well, we cut our own stuff, by golly. Yeah, I mean, there's a place online that does 3D printing, I guess, for Microsoft, and so that's what it is set up to go Lord, there. Lord, 147 bucks to cut that out. I thank God to look at the pretty picture. <laughs> yeah. And up, uh, Carl is saying overlay is easier. Apparently, John and Paul are not talking. <laughs> Goop again. Come on now. Unless they got put in chat prison, but I'm pretty sure they didn't because they haven't talked in a while. And there we go. Paste as new image. Yep. Paul, uh, John is saying dang Yankees. <laughs> That's funny. The Bears. The Bears. The Cowboys. Don't disrespect my Cowboys. Now, we know... Uh, I know you're a Browns fan. If <laughs> uh, Carl Taylor is a Falcons fan, and well, I guess with with uh, John also being in Georgia, maybe he's a Falcons fan. I'm not sure. Totally guessing. I don't know what fan Paul is, or if even if any of these people even watch football. I think Carl watches football. You know, I, I watched the know. Super Bowl for the first time this year. I watched it, and see, I was taught. I was. I was. I didn't know who I wanted to win because I got tired of seeing the Patriots win, but the Eagles were a, our division rival to the Cowboys, but I wanted to see the Patriots dethroned. So I was going for the Eagles, but don't tell all my Cowboy friends out there. I was going for Philip. I was going for the Eagles as well. Yay. I was sick of seeing Brady win. So. Yeah. Let somebody else have one. And that was the first time uh, the Eagles had won a championship since 1960. That's for anybody watching. Cowboys and Saints is Jeff Robinson's favorites. I can't pick two, but if I had to pick a second one, I would probably say Texans, only because I'm loyal to Texas. Okay, John says he's eating and has a mouthful. You don't have to talk, John. Type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have to use your mouth to, to type. Yes, and I agree what Carl Taylor is saying. Pittsburgh was robbed when the, on that. He's probably referring to the the catch that was ruled not a catch because it, it and that that's that irked a lot of people. I know this ain't what the show is about, but we're uh, we're talking to the people out in the chat. So what the heck? Um, but uh, two two different plays and the Eagles that the Eagles did. And earlier in the season and in past seasons were considered not a catch, but yet in the Super Bowl it was a catch. And the one uh Paul uh not Paul, Carl Carl is talking about is probably when the guy he caught the ball. I don't know if you can see me or not, because the oh you can see me. Uh the guy caught the ball and as he hit the ground, his hand kind of did this and the ball it still sort of stayed in his hands, but it yeah, but they call it a non catch, so they, they, they. I think that was the difference between them getting to the Super Bowl or not getting in, or at least further off in the playoffs. I don't remember where it was. Anyway, since that's what the show is about, I figured we'd talk football. <laughs> that's that's all right. I don't mind seeing the Steelers lose once. Well, I, uh, I, I think the Steelers that, are. But I'm from Cleveland, so we don't want Steelers to win anyway. I feel so bad for the Browns, man. I really do. <laughs> yeah, they'll never win. Not until we get a new owner. Or well, a couple of players too. <laughs> no, it don't matter. We could we could have the entire uh, New England lineup and it wouldn't matter. We wouldn't know what to do with them because our owner well, doesn't doesn't know how to manage a football team. Well, that, that's the problem with the Cowboys, uh, among some, is that the owner tries to coach instead of letting the coaches coach. Yeah. And and Hugh Jackson is not a coach. It's, yeah. it's a joke. <laughs> Yeah, so. people people either love or hate Jason Garrett or, and uh, uh, Jerry Jones. But Jerry Jones is business minded, but I think he needs to leave the coaching to the coaches. I got to give credit to the uh, Cleveland fans, though. We had our perfect season parade, so there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, John is saying at least JP, Jamie, Jamie Page is not here. Or he, we would have to explain it to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you want me to show? Well, I did a YouTube video on it, but do you want me to show how I do the the skewing thing in GIMP, which is the sure. same program? If you want. All righty then. Let's. Uh, can you present me, please, sir? Yes. Hold on. Let's invite people. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got to remember how to do this. All right. Present to everyone. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now you're going to have to babysit the chat while I'm doing this. And I'll talk real nice and sly. Well, hang on. Then I got to go over to YouTube and pull up the chat. I had it shut down. Hey, blip it. Sometimes it slows down my... Yeah, almost usually before every show, I'll reboot my computer because doing shows will slow it real slow down a lot. Well, right I'm now I'm saying to everyone, hello. Where may I find a picture? Everybody, uh, 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 um, I know I got a picture here. Let's find a picture. Uh, okay, uh, I'm there, Charles. All righty then. Let me find a picture. I'll use a picture of my twin brother. Ha! Huh. Yes, this will be this will be proof I have a twin brother. He he shaved since then, so he, he he doesn't have a beard like I do, but he does have a little bit of a beard. Where the heck did the picture go? There it is. All right. So you will actually get to see my twin brother, folks. Uh, I need to start screen sharing first. Screen share. Let me know in the chat if I'm moving too fast, even though I haven't started yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We are using the same program Lee did. It's called GIMP. And I have it down here in my system tray. Boom. Uh, Carl's leaving us. He's going to bed. Good night, Dang, Carl. It, Carl. You old fart. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Okay, now this this uh, program does come with all the toolbar pop ups or little toolbox. What do you call them? Little boxes. But I have two monitors, so you're not seeing one of them. But we won't be using it anyway. I don't hit file new. I hit file open to bring in an image. And I just hit desktop and I'll find the picture I wanted to use. It's my twin brother, and I'm not lying, it really is my twin brother. But he has since shaved that beard. His oh my name gosh. Is... He looks just like you. Yeah, that's a funny thing with twins. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that really is my twin brother. His name is Cliff. Uh, he lives about 40 minutes away in Hamilton, Texas. That's a beautiful wife named Laura. Anyway. I'll try to move as slow as everybody was wanting. Is the chat active at all? Or I mean, are people seeing this? <laughs> Is everybody leaving? <laughs> well, be happy. Uh, this road. Oh God, naked Charles. My eyes, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> okay. I've already done that. And this is actually a very quick process. And this is if you want to skew the picture, that's the only purpose of doing this. And again, my YouTube video, if I move too fast here, my latest YouTube video shows this process. Uh, you just all you all you do is go over to the word tools, drop down to transform tools. You have all these options. You just go down to perspective, and it gives you these four squares, and it pulls this over here. But you don't really need to do anything over here until you're done. And all you do is drag the four corners, however you want to do. It. I mean, you can get really extreme and do it like that. You know, that's skewing the picture, but I I tend to do it like that like that and like that basically it not to insult anybody but if you don't know what they mean by perspective it means you're looking at it from like what's closer to you is bigger blah 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 blah, blah. and so that's how i try to display them but that way you can still sort of tell what it is but it can't be copied and you, you i know the other picture still in the background but the second you hit transform boom must be a big picture is why it's taking so long. I've never had this part happen. Be happy, said that looks like me, Charles. 
I say that 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 is technically the the finished thing, but uh, but I tend to say mine is a PNG, and that would save it with a uh, with a transparent, transparent background. But uh, there's a way I get around that. So we do the same as you said. File, export as. Wait, just a sec. I gotta make sure it's not open in my paint program. Okay. File, export as. I'm gonna keep the same name. Clip. No, it's a JPEG. Okay, so I may not have to change anything. Export. It's saying it already exists. Do you want to replace it? And I'll say yes. Click on replace. Click on export. And you'll see on my desktop over there. And I just close it. Just got her changes. Close again. And shop pro. Drag it into paint shop pro. And, and then you can choose, like, if you wanted to do a black background, blah, 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 blah. You just, that's however you want to display it. But that right there is the very simple process of skewing an image. So some, if it, whether it's a painting, a drawing, a photograph, a uh, scroll saw pattern, if you don't want somebody to steal your idea but still be able to tell what it is, that is how you do it. If I move too quick, again, that is my latest uh, uh, video on YouTube, which is, Charles Deering scroll. Uh, you spell Deering D E A R I N G. And uh, by God, that that's how you do it. I know it seems like oh my God, that was so simple, and and it really is. And believe it or not, I didn't know how to do that. Steve Good taught me how, because we were trying to find ways to make images visible but not stealable. And again, folks, if you're joining, just joining us, or or don't know much about the scrolling community, the uh, a majority of people don't steal, but uh, a lot do. So that's why some of us go through measure. Some people just do a watermark, but some people think that covers too much. Sometimes I'll do my I'll do my name and skew it, like you see me on Facebook. And uh, John is saying that 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 my brother looked like him, which is funny because that's my twin brother. So that means John is my triplet. I'm still waiting on John. To, <laughs> I'm still waiting on John to send me a picture. He's on his tablet right now, but I, I've never seen what John looks like. Oh boy, you could have a triplet. Yeah, never that would know. be funny. <laughs> That'd be a trip. And, and the funniest thing, I know this is totally off topic. People say, "What's it like being a twin?" Well, I don't know because that's all I've always been a twin. So, yeah, it's cool. I will say, this is totally off topic. I know, folks, but at least. With me and my brother, I don't know how it is with all twins, but your twin is your soulmate, your your best friend. And you do have, it's not like if he gets hit in the arm, I feel the pain kind of thing. It's not that kind of thing, but you do you do share a lot of things, and you kind of pick up pick up things from each other. Uh, but yeah, our personalities are similar. We're always competing to see who can be the funniest. So getting us in the same room is a hoot. But I don't think you've ever met my brother, have you, Lee? Not on a hangout or anything. No. Very few people have, but he's my best friend in the world as far as, you know, people close by. But, uh, so, yeah, that, um, that's how you skis a thing, and uh, you're you're still presenting me if you care. Oh, no, we were still talking, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, just, John, if you're buffering, all you do is refresh the feed, and that'll stop it from buffering. Yeah, it's better tonight because I plugged it into the Ethernet, so we're a little faster. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, yeah, that's a very, very, very quick way of doing what I do to skew images. Now, there, there might be people out there. I haven't tried to unskew an image. Let me try that live on the air, Lee, if you don't mind. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if it's, it can be hit. Because if people can unskew it doing the same method, then that's going to suck. <laughs> so I will... I will try the. I will try to unskew it, and if it can be unskewed, then people will still be still well, still be I think stealing. You, I think once you save it and you put it up there, I think once you save it, it'll actually lose quality if they try to unskew it. But yeah, probably. I'm. I'm just. I've never even tried to unskew one. So let's try that again. Brought in the image that's skewed. We're gonna go tools. We'll try to do it. Try to do it with a pattern that you did. No, I don't want to show patterns because people will screen capture it. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm just gonna try this. Okay, no, it won't work because we, the 
the corners are the only places you can drag because if i try from here well okay let's say let's see if they, you can skew the crap out of it like this that'd be pretty difficult but i don't think it'd be impossible but oh crap okay we're gonna have to edit this out of the video because because <laughs> i just taught people how to steal my crap i don't think you could do it with a pattern because i think it would lose quality yeah, hopefully because that was really that's why, to try that's, why I, <laughs> that's why i said if you do it with a pattern i'm curious to see how much it loses its quality welcome see. back john yeah yeah um uh, you can try that off yeah. there if you want but, but yeah there are some people that will go through all kinds of efforts to steal it but you know if they if they can spend hours to convert one little pattern then have at it but and again the masses majority of people don't steal it's just those it, it, it's not even the ones that steal so much sometimes it's the ones that steal and share that's why i you know that's what got me started started out just blurring images and people couldn't tell what they were and yeah, that, then we went from there so yeah but hopefully people seeing me having trouble trying to unskew it will know that it's not worth the effort so i got no steal i need to eat okay Yes, he needs to come to Ohio, so stop stealing his patterns and buy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right, John was saying he has family in Oklahoma. So uh, that's Oklahoma is about 10 hours from me, the Oklahoma line. Uh, 10 or so hours, somewhere in there, but that's a heck of a trip, too. How close are you to the uh, Waco? I'm about 45 minutes from Waco, and there is an airport in Waco. Yeah. I was Waco's just here, and I'm here. So I'm 45 minutes southwest of... What was that? I just started watching that show. What show? Waco. It's I like a know. documentary about the uh, events in Waco. Oh, yeah. I, I, I wasn't living here at that time. I was living elsewhere, but uh, I don't, I've never even seen the site where it all happened, but I, that'd be cool to see, just to say I saw it. You're you're, think, you're speaking of David Koresh and, uh, right. and uh, ATF or all those people. Yeah. So, folks, that's how you skew it, and that's how you make it look like it's a cutting. It was with Lee and Charles Daring. <laughs> the Lee and Charles show. Yeah, well, Lee Knighton and Charles Daring, not Lee and Charles Daring. Well, let's just make it Charles and Lee show. How about that? Yeah. I'll be first on the marquee, baby. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the hell people can tolerate me, but it, it's it's fun. See, this if is nothing this else. Is like, I make people laugh, and that that makes me feel good. Go ahead. This is like old times, you and me, just us. For real. Were <laughs> me and you, baby, me and you. Until John, uh, until John gets a webcam and a uh, what you call it, and a microphone, and say, "Hey, I want to join a hangout." Cool. John. Come on, John. Yeah. John, you need to get a camera and a, and a microphone. And a microphone. I know Carl Taylor has one. I know Paul's Messy Workshop has one. His last name is Cordless. I don't know if Jeff Robinson has one, but I have met Jeff Robinson in person. Listen, <laughs> in person. And him and his lovely wife. You and me need to meet Artie. Yeah. It's been a while. Well, we never met. So, yeah, it, it definitely has been a while. <laughs> Anyhow. It'll happen. It'll happen. If I win the lottery, by God, I'll have my trucker pilot come get one of us. Just might have to take a drive to Texas. You never know. Oh, Lord. But I hope you don't mind smelling like an ashtray because I smoke a lot in my shop. I don't know. Next time I'm down near Texas, <laughs> which is... I don't know when that'll be, but yeah. I never know. I remember when you mentioned, first mentioned the Ohio show, I looked and it was like 19 hours away. I said, holy monkey, my... That's me trying to cuss politically correctly. Yeah, 19 hours, that's, that's a hoot. And if it wasn't for my anxiety, I'd consider flying places, but, you know, with anxiety, if you're driving, you can pull over. Big things get too bad. I've been in a plane, you're stuck. <laughs> can't, you can't say pull over or you'll be on the news. <laughs> Land this uh, plane. <laughs> I think Jeff Robinson said I don't steal patterns, just wood. 
but he put sterling. <laughs> I don't sterling patterns. So I think he meant steel. I don't steel patterns. Just wood. Uh, uh, my chat froze up. I don't. Yeah, steel patterns. What do you put? I don't. Yes, I don't steal patterns. Well, that's good. You shouldn't steal patterns. Us designers work too hard for it. Yeah, and, and yeah, I know he was just trying to be funny. Uh, and I know I like I, again. A lot of people don't steal patterns, but I'll be the first to admit when I first. I'm about to give an idea to thieves. When I first got into scrolling, way back in 1997, I I just got the catalogs and took them to a a copy place and zoomed them. That's why I don't like how they display some of them. But you know, stuff happens. But if you go through the efforts of stealing, you know, it's not going to be as quality as just getting the pattern. And plus, most of the patterns are affordable unless you're like me, eating cardboard. I'm just kidding. Um, um, yeah, I've been known to buy other designers' patterns. It's been a while, but uh, I try to help support people. But I got to really like the pattern in order to do that. Do that because I never buy just to buy. I I buy to because I want to eventually cut it. Blah 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 blah. How many do we have watching, Charles? I have no idea. I was unable to see. I can't see on mine uh, how many people are viewing. It should tell you at the bottom of your hangout window. At the very bottom, it says so and so viewing. I uh, scrolled down too far. Come on. Uh, eight watching. Eight watching. Righteous. That's more than I thought we're watching. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, right. Jeff Robinson's saying he steals wood. I wish to God I lived next to a cabinet store or a, not a cabinet store, a cabinet shop. Paul's Wessie Workshop. There's Paul's Paul. Wessie Workshop. Oh, he Paul. said, "Ain't watching." There's old Paul. Thought you done run away from us, Paul. They were all probably watching Eloy's show and then came over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad that we stepped on Eloy's show a little bit. I didn't Sorry, think about Eloy. that. Show started. <laughs> Uh, uh, he had a don't don't forget to go look at that as Escajedo Woodworking, E S C A G E D O. It's like oh god, now I'm gonna get it backwards. Escajedo, Escajedo. It's E S C A G E D O Woodworking, and he does something called the Mad Maker Show every Tuesday night. Tonight he had Mark Lindsay as his guest. So, uh, Charles, is Shelly going to be having like a show now, or is that just like a one-time thing? I don't know if she'll be having a show, but she will be doing more videos regarding Sawdustle. So if anybody's yeah. curious about that, but yes. And I'm, I'm excited for her because, I mean, there were so many people telling her you could, you could so make money off of this if you market it to the right people, but she cared more about sharing it with the world and i thought that was cool because you know there are money hungry people out there or even money needy which is what i consider myself i don't consider myself money hungry just money needy <laughs> but uh, i think it's very admirable that she so openly shared it with people and uh, yeah she plans on doing videos to give more of a visual of the process and stuff like that and her channel is know what mom knows and you can't say know what mom knows without going know what mom knows anyway that's that. that or she's oh she's also known as misinformation oh that's true on that one comedy video her name is shelly cole her husband's name is shane cole al and she's yeah al well, 4t paul, paul yeah 4t paul's messy workshop says seems labor intensive to me now we've been babbling so much i don't know which part is labor intensive oh he might mean that uh, making us on this though i don't know uh, I told Shelly if she makes it into like a board kind of thing, I just buy the board off her. I told her I wanted to experiment with brownies, so she had to send me ten pounds. It didn't work. <laughs> so, oh, and Jeff Robinson saying he can't wait to see if sawdust so can be turned. I imagine it can be turned, but I imagine it will be fragile because if you brought if you drop a piece of it, it will break. So maybe not as fragile as aromatic cedar you know because that stuff breaks easy as heck but okay making sawdust though he said that's that's what paul was saying was labor intensive but uh yeah i'd like to see if it could be turned too but the pieces she sent me none of them were big enough to to uh scroll but i was very appreciative to to have gotten them got a brown heart 
anyway uh yeah it would be nice to see if it can be turned i think if you're gentle with the tools it can be I, that's my total guess i have no clue I, anyhow and paul actually spelled it right hey there's ron norris he's the one i was telling you earlier says click me and him say click all the time when we talk he's the one there's that, a t-shirt uh for you ron he's about the only one that appreciates when i call people butt nuggets except he calls them <laughs> butt nuggets yeah, because I used to call people, hello, butt nuggets, but he calls them chat nuggets. I took What's it up, down Ron? because I took it down because they were $30 a shirt and I wasn't selling any, but I had one up there that's a click with a mouse on it. Oh, but yeah, <laughs> I'd like to address that if you don't mind. Uh, Ron Norris says click. I can't say it because it's technically a cuss word on YouTube, but anyway, you can see the chat. Uh, any of y'all that might think that the, my hats and shirts are cheap i mean are expensive uh i got the prices as low as i could to where i could still make something i'm and i know business wise you're not supposed to talk about that kind of stuff but i only make like three to five dollars per item so uh i tried to get the prices reasonably low but and still make a little bit but uh, i've had about five people buy the picture version of the scroll on I don't know if anybody's bought the text version of scroll on on the t-shirt, but I, the cap I'm definitely tickled with. There's like five different caps and beanies. I almost said beanies and weenies. <laughs> I don't sell weenies. Don't go there. It's uh, beanies <laughs> and, uh, and uh, knit caps and, and different kinds of caps. And there's the t-shirts. And that's all at woodenvisions.com. Charles Daring weenies at woodenvision.com. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So that that's where uh because of that nah. whole click clicking thing, that's why at the end of his shows Lee says click on because I told him he couldn't say scroll on. <laughs> so he started saying click on. Actually, uh Ron Norris said, Why don't you have a shirt that says spiral blades pool? I, I would, but I don't think that many people would buy it. <laughs> I actually, and this is not me complaining. I thought, okay, without the picture of me, because if, even if somebody doesn't like me, but they like scrolling, I figured scroll on is something people would jump at, but not a lot have. Uh, Woodnuggets.com. <laughs> Wooden nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it's warm in here. I need to turn my heater off. Welcome to Texas. Yeah. Yep, yep. I don't know where Ron Norris is located or people loves football now that we've you know, talk to different people about football and where they're located. I know Jeff's in Texas. Paul is in Michigan. Ron Norris, I don't know where he's at. Uh, uh, John and uh, Carl were in Georgia. 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 So, yeah, uh, the show's back Ron to you, sir. Tocalusa, Alabama. Well, I guess my chat keeps freezing up because, oh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He's only a couple. I drove through Alabama going to Georgia once. I don't know if I was anywhere near Tuscaloosa. I was on something, I think I-10 or 210, or 810. I don't remember. Something 10. Roll Tide. He's a college football player or lover, not player. Wait. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Which spiral blade should I start out with for quarter-inch birch ply? Now, Jeff, I'm a terrible person to ask that because because I cut large projects and I st stack cut a lot, I tend to use number threes and number fives, which you could probably get away with smaller. Uh, good seeing you again, Paul. Uh, Bye, Paul. Paul. Yeah, yeah, Paul is leaving Have us. Have a good night, Paul. Thank you for watching us, Paul Corliss. Thanks Paul's for watching. workshop. Uh, yeah, no, everyone, you, for, don't forget everyone to give me a thumbs up too. Yeah, I done did that when the show started, because you know, or hey, thumbs down, whichever you prefer. Yeah, <laughs> somebody went there. Uh start with all of them. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I wish I, I I use number three and number five, but uh, on a Hagner, I can't get anything smaller than a number three to work. But that doesn't mean that's Hagner's fault. It's just there are certain clamp sizes for certain blades. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry I can't give you a better answer when it comes to spirals. But uh, you you could try three or smaller. Uh, but, yeah, the thinner the wood, the smaller the blade you can go. The thicker the wood, the, you know, 
and even with thick wood, a spiral is hard to use because it because it uh you know it's a spiral blade. <laughs> and Ron Miller said he didn't know there was a show tonight. tonight. Well, you you don't you don't have a uh, consistent weekly show is probably how he didn't know, but yeah, there was a show tonight, Ron. <laughs> Well, Glad I did have a it. consistent one for a while, and then we had a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah, live I had to finish up the magazine. I, I had to redo the show. magazine and redo Sawdust magazine twice. So uh, it's I had, a while. Stop, I had to stop doing my show. Well, I didn't have to. I stopped doing my show partially because of depression and because there's other shows doing shows, and it just seemed like overkill at the time, and I was running out of ideas. And I didn't want to recycle people that had been on other shows to have my mind. And it was a gracious bow out. It wasn't a tantrum or anything else. And plus, at the time I had made the decision, my depression was major. Uh, uh, Jeff Robinson, try bear wood. Wait, what is it? Is it bear wood or bear? bear dag nabbit. Go to bearwood.com. B E A R. W O O D dot com because I just I'm gonna be doing a video trying their blades and they I I did a uh I scanned them that next to a flying Dutchman uh at six hundred DPI and the uh the Pegas that's what Bearwood sells. I've been doing flying Dutchman for twenty one years. But I tried the Pegas and uh I'll show you the a video on that in a few days. But even just zooming in and looking at them, uh, the Pegasus blades are sharper and the teeth are a little bit bigger. So that might make them slightly more aggressive, but uh, they last longer. They're made out of, uh, uh, get all the terminology, is stronger, stronger material. So it should last longer. And I'm not being paid to say that. And my voice is going away because of allergies, but. Okay, so uh, Jeff Robinson already uses Pegasus. He says he uses D and D. I don't know what that means, but uh, you can get your Pegasus blades from Bearwood.com. And I'm not being paid for saying that. Yeah, and when I'm not, I don't use spirals, but I use a lot of uh, PS Wood Machine blades, and I use the uh, ones that Garnett sells, which is similar to Flying Dutchman, but they're so. his own. His website is sawbird.com is, is uh, Garnet Halls. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember, Ron, so I'll, I'll do that on my review video where I compare the two. I don't know if it'll help because I think it's spirals in general that that leave the fuzzies, but I will do a I will add that to my review when I when I put it out. And it should be hopefully within the week, if not soon after, because you know I'm working on other things too but and john is saying he needs to get new blades too now john the second the show's over you got to send me a picture of you so i know how how much we look alike <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway lee back to your show since it is your show triplets separated at birth yeah that, that'd be trippy and see people asking what uh uh what's it like to be a twin i'd be Wondering what it would be like to be a triplet. I can't picture having a third one of us that looks alike. That'd be weird. So it's probably the same way people look at uh, at uh, twins. But uh, Ron, answer your question. I I did not look at the fuzziness or or lack thereof when I tried the Pegasus uh, because I haven't actually scrolled with the Pegasus yet. I just unbox them and put them in the clamps to get ready for the video so that's why i haven't even tried the pegas yet but i the one thing i did notice is when i scanned them in and saw yes i have thought of that ron it's just a time consuming process and i still got a bunch of patterns i gotta get on there and uh, yes, i was, gonna, my say, depression, I was I gonna say i was gonna say uh, i think charles would say there's too many to actually put up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah in finished pieces i probably have 75 or more laying around my house but I do need to get them on there because I could attract, you know, people that might actually want to buy the finished pieces. But uh, that's slow on my part. When depression hits, I, I shut down on everything and don't really give a crap. Uh, 
but patterns come first because that's my passion. Uh, but yeah, I do need to get some finished pieces put on my website. But I do have a page on Facebook called Charles During Scroll Saw Portraits and More that does show some finished pieces if anybody's interested. It's a Facebook group, uh, page, not a group. Uh, scroll, Charles Daring, Scroll Saw Portraits, and more. Uh, oh, he said, yeah, I think what he's referring to is people that have cut my design, sending me pieces of finished product. And I think I would like to do that because the company I'm working with right now uh, wants some of my patterns on there and they, they would love to see people that have cut my designs. I don't know if he's referring to my designs or not, but they want me, they would occasionally like me to use a picture of the finished piece. And I don't have a lot of pictures of my finished pieces yet. So if anybody has cut, if you're watching this, no matter when, if you cut any of my designs, if you could take a picture at a slight angle and send it to me, I'd appreciate it because that would help me on this site I'm working with as well. And thanks to everybody who does buy my patterns. Yes. Awesome. Harnell Media. Yes. I've already mentioned them. I believe uh, uh, John, who is Be Happy, uh, he's a member of Harnell, or Makers Media Network, and Harnell Media is who does my website. And uh, he busts his butt to do it, and I'm behind on, because he'll he can, he can put the patterns and thumbnails everything on the site, but I got to categorize and do keywords and stuff like that. So anything that's slowed down on the site is my fault. Nobody else's. He, he busts his butt on a bunch of sites. Uh, Harnell Media is Steve Neal and N E A L O N, but look up Harnell Media. Okay, sounds sounds. I appreciate that, Ron. Uh, you can send it to All me right, on Charles. Facebook. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Back to you. I think we're, uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to shut it down here in a bit because uh, the fiance is home now. <laughs> uh oh, when the girl home, you got to get off that computer now. Hi, yeah. Lindsay. Uh, she's uh, are you in trouble? Oh, he's done my right. barns and working on my turkey. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you, Ron. Working on your turkey. I have a scroll saw pattern of a turkey. <laughs> Unless she's cooking a turkey, plans on mailing it to me. I imagine he means cutting a turkey. Yes, yeah, your book of barns. Yeah, I have an ebook. I have 14 ebooks actually, and one of them is barns. Any he back to you? If you want to shut her down, I will shut up just long enough to let you do that. Appreciate Paul, John, Ron, uh, Jeff. Jeff, and Carl for being here. Carl, who's be happy? At, that's John LaCourse. Okay, John. All right. All right. Well, we're going to shut it down because it's about 10. Oh, it's going to be 10, 12 here. So, um, all right. I just want to say thank you to everybody that was on the chat tonight. Uh, Ron, Jeff. Uh, John, Carl, and who else? Carl and Paul. Uh, Paul. I'm sure there were more. Jeff Robinson. Yeah, there were uh, more watching that than were chatting. Uh, but I want to thank everybody that was watching and chatting. Thank you guys. Uh, sorry, this was on a Tuesday, not a Monday. Uh, we'll get that back. Um, we'll get back on Monday nights. Uh, okay, uh, Ron, Ron is asking if you get more notice so he can make sure he catches the show. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll make sure that uh, I get – I'm trying to get it so that we have uh, notice up a week before, but it doesn't always happen. Like Charles said, um, I don't want to do a show where it's on, not a good quality show. It, it, I do it on a schedule, but I don't want to do it where it's not a good quality show and I'm just putting out garbage to say that I had a show on a weekly basis. Yeah, Ron you know wants to know what the drinking word was. We'll just say scrolling because we said that a lot, so – so if you go uh, back turkey. and watch it and want to get drunk, <laughs> scrolling. Well, turkey was only said two or three times, but anyhow, uh, Jeff Robinson, I see your note, and I'm taking that in mind, and that's a good idea. But uh, as I said, yeah, I don't want to put out a show every week uh, if it's not a good topic. So that's why I was kind of uh, not having a show for a little while. I was trying it's to get a good topic. Topics. Uh, well, 
I don't want to, well, I understand Rhonda too said that I should just do it to have fun, but um, that's the whole point of the show, but I don't want to do a show that's not quality because. Yeah. And it's not fun because if, if you're struggling it, it's not fun. But I, uh, every time I stop doing a show, I, I miss it because of the camaraderie with the chat that and, and the panel, if there is one, that's the part I miss about shows, but, but you know, trying to keep a show going it, it's harder than you would think and i'm not treating people like they're completely clueless but uh you know if you want to be different and do something that somebody else hasn't done or i mean you could do a few shows of showing your way of doing what other people have done but yeah the al for t al forte hey folks how you doing oh, al you got here just in time <laughs> just in time to finish, just about huh? to end it. <laughs> hey bled all right now what did I miss? You made it. You missed everything. Football and Star Trek. I'm kidding about the Star Trek part. <laughs> yeah, we were discussing uh, World of Warcraft. Oh boy. We What's totally didn't. No, we, we didn't discuss we didn't, World of Warcraft. We didn't go there at all. But I can hang out and chat with you, uh, Al. I, I think Lee might have to leave, but I, he's also one to end the show. But uh, but I, we sit here and talk. By God, it was good seeing you, Ron, John, Jeff, Carl, and <laughs> Paul. I don't think I yes. missed anybody. I hope I did not. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being out on the chat tonight. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next show. Until then, Charles, point to your hat. Screw along. <laughs> <laughs> click on. <laughs> Just Thank for you, Ron. Thank you all on. for watching, baby. <laughs>